this is a Cross EHP 120 ton 12 foot press brake. It's six axis, Y1, Y2, with a four axis back gauge. We have Z1, Z2, R, and obviously X. This is Dan with Hydro Engineering, and we're going to do a demonstration on a 12 bend part that has hemming in it, um, 90 degree angles, and just some very light hatching as well. So, here we go. I'll kind of explain the machine as Dan's doing the bending. Right now we're just doing a very light cross hatch um, to strengthen the part. So, Dan will hit it both ways. The tooling that we have in the press brake is actually Dutch Hemming die. So we're doing everything you see here with a Dutch Hemming die. The reason that's special is that the machine has to be extremely precise to do all these bends in a Dutch Hemming die because as you can see, the die actually comes down, the bottom die. See, it goes down and then tonnage is applied so it makes the bend. You'll notice that now we do our hem, the back gauge gets out of the way. So, and that's flattening the hem. It's equipped with a Dellum control, um, which is extremely, it's a very user-friendly control. Um, we'll talk to Dan about it a little bit later, but across from me, Hydro Engineering has another press brake. Um, they've upgraded this one in the last six months. Um, and what they've noticed is, is that they're able to get about four times the amount of parts through the machine as they were before, and their accuracy is just ten times. Uh, the downstream fitting and welding and secondary ops has just been something that has just saved them a lot of time and money. And I don't know if we noticed before, but if we pay a little bit more attention to the back gauge, um, you know, we can program the back gauge obviously per bend. Um, so where it's at now, obviously we've got it pulled back for doing this very light bending. Now as you'll see, the fingers go over to the left. Now it comes up and we're ready to do our third bend, which we need the gauge fingers. Once it does this bend, you'll notice the gauge fingers will get out of the way. And we'll go down and do our flattening of our hem. Then after we do our flattening of our hem, you'll see the fingers come back into place so that we can gauge off them once more. Uh, <clears throat> the back gauge is also equipped with an R axis, um, which means that it can go vertically up and down. Um, that helps a lot when we're bending off of negative flanges. We also have the Z1, Z2 that I referred to. That's independent side-to-side -side movement of each finger. So you'll notice um, they just moved. They not only go back, um, they have you know, complete independent movement from left to right, which makes it really nice when you have different flange widths. See, they come back together, and then if uh, the next flange width is wider, they would spread out. see Z1 and Z2 move over to the left for this bend, the far left of the machine. So this is really a pretty nice stage bend part. And you'll notice it goes back, fingers come back to the center of the machine, get ready for the next part. Once again, identical part. Um, great, great corners. This one has just as nice of a corner as the one before it, and, and they all will. So, great, great fit downstream. This is Dan with Hydro Engineering, and we kind of want to talk a little bit about some of the differences. Dan has run an AccuPress, which is a press brake right behind us, um, and he's, then he's also run the Cross, the FCNC or EHP model. What are some of the differences you've seen in the, in the quality of the different press brakes? Accuracy. The accuracy of the new press is uh, superior. There's no comparison. Okay. To the press at all. How about setup times? 
set up time about half of what you are. Uh, the smaller dies uh, a lot easier. Uh, and the programming of it, uh, you're making one, maybe two maximum adjustments to get your perfect bend. Where on the active press that we've been running, it's, it's an unending thing. And you, you may make five, six, ten different adjustments before you get it right down to where you're supposed to be. With the new press, it's totally different. Like I say, you might make one, maybe if, if, if you're still out a little bit, uh, two adjustments, and then you're right in. And from that point on, it continues to hold uh, what you put in there. With the AccuPress, the back gauging wasn't as accurate. You couldn't get uh, the consistency of, of bends as you went along, where with, with the new press, we're having a lot more, a lot more product coming through because it doesn't take half the time to run it. What kind, I mean, when you talked about accuracies, what kind of tolerances are you able to hold with this press brake, with the Cross? Oh, the tolerance, they're really, the, 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 the Cross has, it's so precise that you might fall out maybe, at, you might be out maybe at most of a degree when uh, you make your first bend and next, the next adjustment bend is that degree and from that point on it stays right stable right there. So you're plus or minus a quarter of a degree or a half a degree, what do you think? Maybe a quarter. Okay. Maybe That's a quarter of a pretty degree. Pretty accurate. Yeah, pretty, pretty accurate. accurate. All right. How does it how do the parts how are the parts fitting downstream? Oh massively better. A lot better. They've uh, noticed that our our uh, bends Corners and everything are more precise. We're not having quite the problem that we were prior to the new cross machine. Uh, the, the, one of the main things that we have, a, have had a problem with with the AccuPress is the consistency of our pleats. Uh, you might run one pleat, it ran really good. You turn the metal the opposite direction to put your other pleat in, and it goes twice as hard. Uh, with this, we can set it at a pleat and it stays at that pleat. We don't get any variation in that, and that, that means a lot because that, you're not twisting the metal around so it fits snug and tight when they butt it up against the rails. Awesome. Right on. What do you? How about the back gauge? How's it been? How's it been? I mean, as far as accuracy, it's right on. It's perfect. It's, yeah, it's it's right on at all times. Have have no problems whatsoever. Uh, with the back gauge. Uh, once you learn how to use the gum control on it, uh, th there is there is no adjustment to that. The only thing we're adjusting for is uh, angle and degree. That's, yeah. that's it. And you're very rarely out, and if you are, it's just a little. Okay. Now, I remember when I first came in here and we were doing some of these programs, a lot of your programs were written kind of as a centerline program. Um, they weren't. They weren't written as an inside dimension or an outside dimension. Now, um, once you got the, pr the, you know, you learned the program or you learned the control, how easy is it to change your programs and re-enter the programs? How easy is it to do your programming out here at the press break? To make modifications to the programming while you're running? Yeah, real easy. Real easy. It's it's a matter of seconds. Uh, all you've got to do is pull on the screen up what bend you're, you're at right at that point, go in and manually adjust it so that it's coming down uh, right where you need it to be, right on the line. And uh, once it's set, that's it, it's over and done with. Awesome. Uh, is there anything that you've noticed about the press break since you've had it that you haven't liked? No. Okay. No, not at all. <laughs> well, that's a good thing, we like it.